Hi, my name is Mark Day. I'm head of research and development at iRhythm Technologies. I have responsibility for our software, hardware, and manufacturing activities here at iRhythm. So in essence, what we see currently is a lot of where we started with AI, uh, which is a, a, a really focus on medical imaging work, where AI has been extremely helpful, uh, be it uh, in analyzing information coming from everything from x-rays to CAT scans to MRIs, and providing more insight and understanding. And in essence, we're, we're, we're seeing AI be much more capable of handling these increasingly sophisticated uh, and voluminous kind of amounts of data coming into cardiologists and on the imaging side. Uh, more recently than that, if that's where we started, more recently we see AI being applied to diagnostic streams, uh, everything from uh, our own work where we've collaborated with Stanford to develop an algorithm capable of kind of expert level annotation of ECG. Uh, we've also seen work applied to PPG information coming off common wearables uh, for arrhythmia and uh, rhythm diagnosis, as well as information even from heart rates in terms of what we've seen coming off the Apple Watch. It's capable, of, AI is capable of interpreting essentially even these lower quality data streams uh, with tremendous insight. Uh, and we're just starting to see the, the use of AI in a more capable kind of biomarker capacity uh, where it can be used to kind of indicate uh, so much more than just what is traditionally seen as a, as a rhythm uh, kind of indication. Uh, we see it in terms of AI being capable of pulling out aspects and specific biomarkers for understanding that can lead to essentially some prediction or understanding of, of potassium levels, uh, even all the way to even being a, an early indication of Ebola. Uh, so really a very wide range of capabilities, and I think we're just scratching the surface with respect to even what data streams like ECG can provide to us. So in essence, the, 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 where we see the greatest potential for AI is to harness the really tremendous amounts of information that are coming into cardiologists currently. Coming into the practice, they're overwhelmed with essentially a lot of the false positives that come. Uh, there's a chronic problem right now with respect to false positives being seen in telemetry wings of hospitals. These are all problems connected to the quality of detection and information and insight that's given to them from the data streams that they're receiving. AI can solve this. And so AI has the capability essentially of allowing physicians, clinicians, uh, and technicians, uh, indeed all aspects of kind of the clinical care paradigm to be more effective, uh, to gather insights more effectively from data and essentially to, to make their way through the morass of information that they're giving, that they're receiving, and, and use that more effectively in terms of guiding patient care, which is really what we want them to focus on. Which is to say that uh, we see all these applications currently uh, in terms of, of a kind of providing more almost retrospective uh, understanding of, of what's going on in terms of data streams. But there's this whole other aspect of being predictive. And this is really where we see the greatest potential for AI. Uh, which is to basically change our, uh, our understanding of not just working with streams of information that are reflective of the past and can be suggestive of the correct way to, to treat patients in the future, but rather also uh, providing a, or using AI as a tool to gather really extensive data streams and, and data sets, including outcomes data, to provide prediction. Uh, to, to, to essentially use all these biomarkers, whether it's ECG or PPG or other, or imaging information, and essentially predict what's going to happen to patients. And in that way, be much more proactive and much more thoughtful and effective with respect to the management of, of their, their patients' conditions. The area that we see the greatest uh, potential impact is, is particularly in atrial fibrillation. Mm -hmm. uh, we know right now that there's on the order of about a, one million patients in the U.S. alone walking around without understanding that they have AF. Uh, there's a cons considerable stroke risk with that population. Uh, the problem being that they're, they're spread across the entire population. Uh, certainly they're more prevalent to over 65 and other risk factors, hypertension, for example, and the chas vasc score is commonly used to identify those. There's a lot of work going on currently to identify uh, those populations, but you're basically looking at a prevalence of of a one to two percent, uh, maybe even in these these higher cohorts, uh, the reality is that with with that prevalence uh, in the population, you need technologies that are very capable of interpreting very large amounts of data and being very accurate 
uh, with respect to with respect to not just sensitivity, of course, if it's there, we want to find it, but also specificity. Uh, we do not want a lot of false positives and extra cost to the healthcare uh, environment to and and value chain to to be caused by a lot of false positives coming through. So in this in this uh, essence, the AI and what it can do to provide very very accurate. Uh, outcomes that are both effective from a sensitivity and a specificity perspective is, is where we see um, really great capabilities and specifically focus on atrial fibrillation.